Hey kids, welcome to worship. Super excited to be able to tell you a little bit about our lesson today. We are learning from Mark chapter nine, then we're gonna discuss 33 through 36. So I wanna read the first little portion of the scripture for you. It says, they came to Capernaum when he was in the house. He asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. So we found um, the people that were around Jesus, they were arguing. They were arguing about who was the greatest person. I don't know about you, but sometimes I've been around people who have jokingly said, I'm the greatest. Um, and then maybe their friends, no, I'm the greatest. And they play around. I've never actually seen two people argue about who is the greatest. But in our Bible, that's what they were doing. They were trying to figure out who was the greatest among them. And when we think about that, um, I don't know about you, but I think about famous people. So we're going to play a game. All right. Here's how we're going to play. I want you to think about someone right now that you think is famous. It could be a famous YouTuber. It could be an author that you like. It could be an athlete that you enjoy watching. Maybe even someone who sings. But you think about someone who is popular. And I just want you to think about them. And then I'm going to ask you some questions. So here is what I want you to do. When, if your person... If when I ask these questions, if it describes your person, I want you to stand up out of your seat. And then if there's something else that I read that also describes your person, I want you to put up one finger, two fingers, three fingers. And then at the end, let's see who has the most um, out of my questions. All right. So I want to give you one minute to think about um, that famous person. Okay, do you have them? All right, here we go. We're gonna start our game. All right, is your, if the person who wrote a book, if the person that's in your mind wrote a book, I want you to stand up. Has your person traveled more than 200 miles from home? Has your person had a fan club website? Is your person an athlete? Did your person graduate from college? Does your person dress really nicely? Is your person rich or is his parents, his or her parents rich? Is your person famous or has a well-known job? Has your person ever won an award? So those are my questions. I hope that some of you have lots of fingers up. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the person that has probably the most won the game. But actually, if we were playing this game, my person wouldn't have one of those things answered. The person that's in my mind never wrote a book. They never traveled more than 200 miles from home. They didn't have a website. They weren't an athlete. They didn't graduate from college. They didn't really dress nicely that we know of. They didn't have rich parents, nor were they rich. Um, they weren't um, famous and didn't have a well-known job and they never won an award. Actually, the person I'm thinking of um, worked with their hands. They were a great speaker. They exercised a lot, mostly walking. They had lots of friends, and they were very generous. Can you think of who I'm thinking of? You guessed it, Jesus. Jesus is the person that I'm thinking of. Jesus was never the most popular. He was not famous. He was not necessarily well known for his 
job performance. Um, he was a carpenter by trade, but we know that the greatest among them was Jesus. But in this argument where he is listening and asking them, why are you arguing? He says this to them in verse 34 or in verse 35, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. So, you know, I want you to think about that. When we think of a person who's great, we usually think of a very famous person. We think of someone with a lot of popularity. But do we think about people being great because they are willing to serve? I think about our frontline workers right now, the people who work in the grocery stores, the people who work in the hospitals, the people who are part of a rescue squad like EMS, which is an ambulance. I think about all of those people right now who are, who are really our heroes right now. They're just everyday people living their life serving. And that's what Jesus was saying. The greatest are those who serve. The greatest are those who love. And so to be great and to do great, um, Jesus is asking us to do just that, to serve others, to love others, to care for others. I think about our Sunday school lesson today when we talked about being a disciple, a follower, and a follower, a disciple, does what their teacher does. And Jesus lived this, and he used this as an example. He was an example of everything that he believed. So I want you to think about, you know, being a servant, loving those who seemingly um, are in need. I want you to watch this video with me next, and it's part of our lesson. And I want you to to really absorb all that's happening in this video. And after the video is done, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about it. All right, now I'm gonna turn the camera off. This is a story about a boy named Patrick. When Patrick was born, the doctors told his mom and dad that Patrick would never be able to see or walk. This is as far as my arms and legs will straighten, so. I'm always in a seated position, and that's why I use the wheelchair for mobility. We had uh, an old piano in the house, and when Patrick was about four and a half months old, one day I, I was with him and could not get him to quit crying. And it occurred to me, well, how about if I lay this baby on top of the piano? And I laid him on top of the piano and began to play, and he immediately got quiet. I put Patrick in the, in the high chair and played three notes randomly at nine months old, and that little baby found those three notes and played them back to me in order. And, uh, you know, I'd find those notes within one or two tries and play, play back whatever Dad played, and uh, Dad was kind of my, my first teacher, and he taught me you know, the different notes and the different chords and, and what they all represented. Patrick, I think, made us better parents because no longer were we interested in what our dreams were for our children. It was, let's find out what our children are interested in and, and nurture that. And obviously, Patrick had a love for piano, and so he showed us that that's what he wanted to do. Patrick loves to play the piano, and he's really good. Patrick can also play the trumpet, and he really wanted to play the trumpet in his school's marching band. But it would be really hard for him to do because he couldn't walk or see. Patrick's father did whatever he could to help Patrick be a part of the band. People were just so excited that Patrick was gonna be in the marching band. We have to find a way to make this work. I would get off work around six or, or so in the morning, come home and sleep for maybe two, two and a half hours, uh, at which time I would get up, so I would, I would help get him ready for school. Marching band was always from 4.30 to 6.30. Game day? The, the band had to be at the, the field 
five hours before kickoff for you know instrument polishing and warm up and we did a a march around the stadium and, and played for the team as they entered and then we stayed for the whole game and we were usually the the last people to leave so no complaints here it was it was lots of fun dad was doing this all this classes marching band you name it on maybe four or five hours of sleep a night and you know i got a full night's sleep so what have i to complain about we can find something that inspires us just like patrick and i did patrick he can do anything uh with with faith and with his own uh belief in himself and his belief in god it doesn't matter the the challenges or how hard it is you know life is truly a blessing and uh, what you want to do is live each day to the fullest so enjoy every moment Wasn't that an awesome uh, little video? Actually, I don't know that you know this, but that's act the that man and his father. Uh, there was a movie made about his life, and I don't remember what the name of that movie is, but it was on Pure Flix a while ago, and I got to watch portions of it, and it was really good. So I want to read another scripture to you, and it's the last scripture that we have in our verses today. And it starts in verse 36 and goes through 37. It says, He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. And we know that the one who sent Jesus was God. And we know that. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all working together as one. I think about this scripture, I often think about that anytime that there's a children's service, we pretty much will hear this scripture. And it is the number one scripture that's talked about in the Bible when it comes to children. And we know that Jesus loves the little children. It's not just a song. He truly did love children. I don't know if you know this, but in Bible times, children were considered a non-person, meaning they were not important. They were disregarded. Um, a lot of times they were just put to the side. Uh, parents did not look at them, um, in, even as a human sometimes. Society did not look at children as human. I know, hard to believe, isn't it? I can remember being a little girl and my stepfather had a saying, and it was children are to be seen and not heard. And any time that we, I would try to come into a conversation, if it were we were having a group um, over to our home or we were having a dinner or we had family and there was an adult conversation going on, and maybe I went to put something into that conversation, my stepfather would stop me and say, hey, Children are to be seen and not heard. And, you know, it's really interesting because in a lot of ways, that took a, my voice away. And I grew up thinking that I didn't have a voice. And in Bible times, that's what culture was like. But what Jesus was saying in the scripture is he was doing something very different. He was teaching people to love children in not only children, but people who are like children and those who are considered the outcast, those who are considered to be the not part of society, those who are considered to be half a person, those who society have kind of disregarded. Jesus was saying, if you will take them and listen to the children, if you were to take them and care for them and to love them, then you're loving me. And 
It's the same way with us. I think about that movie that we just watched, and I think about how that, you know, if we if there wouldn't have been a father who would have looked at his child and said, you know what, let me invest in my child. Let me not ask my child to do things that I want, but let me look at what my child can do and let me help him to grow. And, you know, the Bible tells us um, to be humble, and that's part of being servant too. And that means to take other people and put their needs above ours. So how about this year, as we begin, let's take on a servant-like heart. Let's love those who seem to be unlovable. Let's love those who maybe society looks upon as being no big deal. And let's love on those people and care for them. Let's serve our brothers and sisters. Let's show Christ-like love. And in doing so, then we are the followers of Christ. I hope you have a great week, guys. I love you bunches. I'm looking forward to being back soon. And until then, um, just know that you are in my thoughts and prayers. I love you guys bunches. Have a great week. Now I'm going to turn the camera off.